Okay, uh, thank you for coming. Let's just get started here. We've got about 15 minutes. Um, let me explain the, the two bills. The reason we're here is uh, I introduced today one of two, and I'm about to introduce the second, uh, two bills that are going to bring significant reform to our public pension system in Pennsylvania. We have two systems. We have SERS, which is the state employees, uh, and then we have PSERS, which is the school employees. And let me tell you what the, the plan is. Uh, for all state future employees, except for those who don't contribute to Social Security, which is just the state police, and for all new or future school district employees, uh, these bills will create a mandatory defined contribution plan, which is like a 401k plan in the private sector. It will require the employer, the state and the school district, to contribute 4% annually, an amount equal to 4% of that employee's annual salary, uh, and the employee will be required to contribute a minimum of 4%. Uh, they can contribute up to what the IRS would allow, but they must contribute a minimum of 4%. And these uh, funds, the 4% from the employer and the 4% from the employee, will go into individual accounts, which will be controlled by the employee, uh, much like out in the private sector where there are 401k plans, there's a kind of a menu of mutual funds and other investment options. So there will be control by the employee going forward. Uh, now, for existing employees, given the case law that indicates uh, benefits cannot be changed, uh, there is an option to be exercised by the employee in the system if they want to exercise the option. And that is to freeze their benefit and the defined benefit plan in place and in exchange go over into the defined contribution plan and receive not 4% from the employer, but 7% from the employer. And they, the employee, would be required to contribute 4% like the future employees uh, will also be required. Okay, so that, that's the basic plan. Now, why do we need these reforms? Um, our pension funds are massively underfunded. And just as an illustration over here on the screens, that's uh, PSERS, the school system, and the red uh, over about a 30-year um, cycle is the underfunding that uh, we are facing in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. They put a price tag on that one alone of about $30 billion underfunded, and SERS, I think, is roughly about a third the size and so has roughly an underfunding of about $10 billion. So clearly there is a problem. How did we get here? Uh, just very quickly, I think it's three reasons. One, in 2001, very rich benefits were granted to all of the employees in those systems, and they were retroactive to anybody in the system, no matter how long they had been serving. Uh, then, for a lengthy period of time after that, uh, this government failed to put the necessary amount of dollars into the funds uh, to avoid us getting into this situation. And the third piece of this trifecta of errors uh, is that uh, they assume, the plans assume a rate of return of now 7.5%, but for a long time it was 8%. And the reason that's a problem is it requires a risk profile of investments in order to get that kind of return that especially um, in very volatile times like 2008 uh, and since then, uh, usually result in very sig significant losses to the funds. So those are the three reasons we're here. Um, what's the result of that? Our own state budget is being really consumed by uh, these jumps in uh, cash that we have to put into these funds in order to keep them solvent uh, and, and paying out benefits. Uh, it's not just happening at the state level, though. It's also happening at our school district level. In my communities, uh, I am hearing from taxpayers every day. They look at this and they say one of three things. You know, I have benefits that are nothing like the benefits that exist in the public sector. That's not fair. 
Uh, you have taxpayers who say we need to be reducing spending, but yet these pension line items are going up at 25, 50, 100 percent every year. Uh, and others who say we have things that we need to do for our schools or for the state, and yet the dollars have to go to this problem. Why is that? So I think that, that the taxpayers I talk to are angry and they want some change. This plan provides change. Um, it says to the taxpayers, we are smart enough now to realize we cannot continue to add more people to this system because it only makes the problem worse. Uh, further, we've also demonstrated here that we cannot manage the pension fund responsibly. Tom, if you could just go to the... So this next slide is a, I guess, about a 30-year history of the, the uh, piecers, I think it is. Um, and you'll see that back in the 80s, it was underfunded by almost 50 percent. So there, there is a history of not being able to manage this appropriately and responsibly. So the taxpayers will get that, at least for future hires. Um, this will not be their problem anymore after they put in the 4 percent or the 7 percent each year. I think they also are asking for something else. They want us to at least try to change the existing benefit system. Um, we have a, a series of court cases that have said that we cannot change the benefits for existing employees, but the option at least allows existing employees to choose on their own to freeze their benefits in place and to go to the new system. The value of that is that if they freeze their benefits in place, then those benefits do not have to grow at the level that the formula in the law on the books says it must. So that will be a benefit long term, I believe, to the unfunded liability. Now, how are we going to get people to switch? By having an incentive of 7 percent for anybody who's in the system, that is an enticement. That's a significant amount of money every year. There also is value, I think, to the existing employees because they get to manage the money themselves. And given the history here in Harrisburg, as well as in other state capitals around the country, um, the government has demonstrated that it is not managing these pension plans appropriately. So I think that employees would be wise to seriously consider getting control over their own investments for their own retirement future. In the end, I really think this is something that our taxpayers demand. It's something that they deserve. Um, and I was pleased to introduce uh, the, two, the one bill, House Bill 2453, on the state system this morning. And hopefully this afternoon, when the finishing touches are, are done on it, uh, House Bill 2454 for the school system. So that's all I had to say. I don't know. Maybe one of my colleagues might have something they want to add, and then we'll take some questions.